and that is not what God's plan is. You have to sacrifice something that is not important, such as maybe a favorite soap opera. And if you watch soap operas, I'm sorry. You have to sacrifice something. I'm not telling you to sacrifice your children getting late to school. I'm not sacrifice. I'm not telling you to sacrifice you getting late to work. I'm not telling you to come late to church. I'm not telling you to not cook supper. But you have to find some way to fit everything in. On day three, concentrate on a willing sacrifice. Brother Lonnie Sharp, when you take up offering and you turn around with that plate and you face everybody, how many grumpy faces do you see that's carrying their money to the offering pan? How many people just, oh, I've got to put in my money. Oh, I'm sorry. I said I was going to do a funny voice. They put in their money with, with the sourest looking faces. What happened to the willing sacrifice? What happened to giving with a joyful heart? When you come to church, this is not an inconvenience. This is a spiritual hospital. This is a salvation station. This is a place of healing, a place that prayer requests get answered, a place that your family's going to come in, a place that your all your prayer requests, everything that you need, not everything you want, everything you need is going to happen right here. But God is looking for someone to give a willing a willing sacrifice. Right. Psalms 50 and 5. Gather thy saints together. Well, I think we've done that. Gather the, thy saints together unto me. That's God speaking. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. When's the last time you sacrificed something to give to God? Time, your prayer. I know it's hard to fit in a prayer life with all that schedule going on. I know it's hard to have a fast day with all these things going on. And it seems like every time you fast, somebody's inviting you over for dinner or somebody wants to buy you dinner or your neighbors are having a cookout and all you can smell is charcoal for miles. You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to give it up because it's worth it in the end. You've been grumpy. I've been grumpy on day three. I've been a grouch on day three, trying to fit everything in. I can't get to church on time for the prayer room. I love the prayer room. I would be the first one here if somebody had let me. I would. Because that's how much it's in here. It is so much in here that this comes first. The house of God comes first. But not everybody can do that. Nevertheless, I'm grumpy. I have done things, I have said things through this day just so I can fit everything in. On day four, I really need my prayer closet. I really need God to forgive me for all the things I've done. I really need God to listen to me forgive other people. I need him to hear that because he's going to know if I really meant it or not. If I'm just saying the words, I'm sorry, and God knows that I didn't mean it, he's going to let me know later. Day four, we concentrate on forgiveness. Forgiveness has such a power to it. It has such a, a loosing feeling. When you have hurt someone, and you know that you've hurt someone, and you ask their forgiveness, and they hug you, and they love you, and tell you it's okay, there is a power behind that. It looses some wonderful things in God. If someone has hurt you, made you feel like a dog, you need to be the better person. 
and go to them and say, not that you've hurt me and I want you to forgive me, but you ask for their forgiveness because the thoughts you've had inside your mind have put you just in the same category as they put you in theirs. Forgiveness is such a wonderful tool of loosing God's gifts inside of you because if you don't forgive others, God's not going to forgive you. Mark chapter 11, verse 25. And when ye stand praying, or in your prayer chair, or in your closet, forgive. If ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Forgiveness has to be accomplished because if we don't, God's not going to forgive us and we're going to find a deep, dark pit somewhere and we're never coming out. It is time to loose forgiveness in day four, not just because of what I've done on day three, but because I want God to forgive me of my sins. I want to repent. Every day I need to repent. It's not just a one-time deal because we all sin daily. We all sin according to our flesh, according to our actions, our attitudes. Sometimes people bring it on and you lose control. God understands. He has mercy. He has grace. But God is after a bride that is spotless. God is after a bride without flaw. And if you're forgetting to forgive, if you're forgetting to say I'm sorry or forgiving yourself and the bridegroom comes back and you have a spot, he's going to pass you up. He's going to say, I don't want that bride. She's dirty. I'm coming after a clean bride, a spotless bride. Psalm 25 and 18. Look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. God, I've done things. There are things, I forget who said it, Brother Thomas, somebody said recently about the secret places in your, your heart. Was it you? The secret places in your heart. There are things inside there that you don't even know about, that you have forgotten about because it's been so long ago. But all it takes is one little thing to come up and God's going to know exactly where that come from because there's something in there you haven't asked for forgiveness for. God wants to forgive you of all your sins, not just the ones you admit. So it's time to pull all the skeletons out of the closet so you can have room in your prayer closet. Amen. Forgiveness from God will get you, will help get you to heaven. You need your sins forgiven. I need my sins forgiven. So on day four, you're concentrate on your worship. You're concentrating on your praise. You're concentrating on your sacrifice. And then you're concentrating on forgiveness. Because all four of these are going to help you develop your prayer life. Day five. Most everyone that has a job in here know what day five represents. Day five represents payday. The checks come around. Usually you grab pizza or something afterwards, but everybody loves payday. Imagine you're at your workstation. And the cart comes around passing out checks and they forget to give yours, and they walk on by, are you going to sit there and say, oh, they're going to get me later? Or are you going to chase them down the hallway? You're going to chase them down? That's exactly what I would do. Day five, concentrate on your promises. There are some things that you have promised God a long time ago 
Oh, if my husband gets in church, I promise to do this. Oh, if my wife gets in church, I promise to do this. If my best friend gets in church, if I get a healing, if I get a miracle, I promise to do this. Well, God kept his side of the promise. When are you going to keep your side of yours? When am I going to keep your side of mine? I'm in this too. This message ain't just for you. It's for me. It's already run all over me. God doesn't forget his promises to you. God doesn't forget anything. But God does want to be reminded. When I married Sister Christy, she knows without a shadow of a doubt that I love her. There is no question in her mind, but she likes to be reminded sometimes. Because it's good to hear it. it it's, it's soothing to know that they remember to say, I love you. God doesn't forget your promises, but he does like to be reminded. So if you have asked God for something, don't hesitate to keep praying for it time and time again. It's not that he's forgotten. It's just that he wants to know that you're still interested. He wants to know if you put this promise that you so wanted and now it's on a back burner somewhere. If you wanted a family member to come into the church and all of a sudden it's not important no more, then he's probably not going to do it because it doesn't seem as important. Hebrews 11 and 9, we call this chapter the chapter of faith or the heroes of faith. We're talking about Abraham. By faith, he or Abraham sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Your promises you make today are your kids tomorrow. The things you ask for today are either going to benefit or hurt your children tomorrow. So are you going to remind God of his promises? Not begging if God has not said no, you can still ask. Because what does it say? Ask, seek, knock. You have to ask, and then you seek it. You can't seek it if you don't talk about it anymore. You have to show that you're interested. And then one of the most famous verses in apostolic truth, when Peter says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Chapter 39 of Acts 2, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that is far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, it's promised to you. Keep reminding God, say, You promised. And God, I'm faithful. I'm going to come to the altar, and I'm going to seek you in my prayer closet. I'm going to find a way to get the Holy Ghost, but not just once, every single day. Every, single, every time I pray, the Holy Ghost is going to fill me. Speaking tongues isn't essential as far as, let me try to say this the right way, it's essential for, for salvation. But it's just evidence. The Holy Ghost is going to fill you and guide you throughout your whole entire life. Whenever you're in places that you're not supposed to be, or places that people put you, or the time of forgiveness, or the time of promise, or the time of worship, the Holy Ghost will lead you. So the speaking in tongues is evidence, but there's all, a lot more to it than just speaking in tongues. The Holy Ghost is a beautiful, wonderful experience, but it's promised to you. And sometimes we forget these promises. Day six. The kids are out of school. Most of you are off of work. It's time to invite people to church, Brother Andrew. You don't need a day six, do you? It's time to go out and witness. But it's also time to be thinking about yourself and myself. Day six, start out with worship. Tell God who he is. Then go to praise. Tell God what he's done. Thank him for it. 
Then it's time to be thinking about a willing sacrifice. Then it's time for forgiveness. Then it's time for promises. Day six, let's talk about salvation. Because salvation is the key between heaven and hell. Salvation is what is going to keep us in the right direction. You can be saved for 99 years, fall on the last day, and lose everything that you worked for. Salvation is more than just the steps we say. We do say repent. We do say get baptized in Jesus' name. We do, see, we do say get the Holy Ghost. These are all great and wonderful, and you need them. I need them. But after that, starts your real walk. Because that's when the devil really steps in and really says, oh, you didn't really repent. You're still doing those things. You may have got baptized, but you probably just got wet. And you didn't really speak in tongues. That was just you just chattering. It's important that when we get the Holy Ghost, that when we seek the Holy Ghost, we speak just like we teach the children with a loud outside voice because this prevents the devil from whispering in your ear saying you didn't really speak in tongues. If you're just going according to what someone else says, then it's time to find the altar again. It's time to hear it for ourselves. That way you can say, ha ha, devil, I heard for myself. I know it's true. You can't put that in my face no more. Day six, you really concentrate on the people that you want saved. And unless every single person in your family is saved and does not have a blemish on them, you should have at least one person to pray for. And if you can't find anyone to pray for, I will volunteer. You can pray for me. Because there's, I'm, I am saved, but there are days when I struggle. There are days when it's real hard to walk in the faith. So if you can't find anybody to pray for on day six, I nominate me. Put me in your prayer room. Put me in your prayer closet. I will appreciate it. I will soak it up and use it to the best of my ability to try to do better by teaching the kids, by reaching lost, by helping my family, by doing everything that I do. Your prayers are necessary. Your family's salvation is necessary if they're going to make it to heaven. Day seven. Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other. We're talking about the name of Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It doesn't say where we could be saved. It says we must be saved. Absolutely. And I know most everybody in this room should know that and eat it up. Acts 28 and 28. Be it known there, be, be it known therefore unto you 